priest in Luke 17, 32, one little short scripture, remember Lot's wife. Brianna opened to Genesis 19 tonight and she preached. She wasn't the first one to do that. Jesus was. It's Luke 17, 32. It's very easy. You're to remember. Remember Lot's wife. And why did Jesus say that? He went on to preach and he said the hour's coming where two are going to be grinding at the meal and one's going to be taken and the other's going to be left. Amen. Two are going to be asleep in the house. One will be taken and the other shall be left. And in verse 31, right before he says that in verse 32 of Luke 17, he said, if you be on your rooftop when I come, he said, don't leave and go into your house to try to take what's in your house. And then he said, remember Lot's wife. Because Genesis 19, 26 said she looked back and was turned. She weren't turned until she looked back. She looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. That pillar of salt was nothing more than the fire of God's judgment. The whole region and everybody that was left in that place that would not repent and hear the message that God came preaching through his messengers, those angels, saying, escape for your life. They wouldn't take heed to it. And when the fire fell, they were all burned up. That pillar of salt was just a picture of burnt flesh. And she was outside, Brother Paul, of the city limits of judgment. She had already exited. She had already came out. That's why the book of Jude in verses 6 gives Solomon and Gomorrah as an example of those who turn back even though, like Brianna preached, she had to know God. Because God answered Abraham's prayer. If there's only ten righteous there, I'll preserve it. So she had been delivered by God. She had already come out of sin. But she looked back. God said, if any man puts his hand to the plow and looks back, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. Luke 9, 56. I want you to see this in the theater of your mind. You can still have your hand on the plow. Preacher, you can still have your hand in the ministry. You can still be in pulpit ministry. You can be on the pew. You can be in the house on Sunday morning. You can be in the choir. You can be singing the songs of Zion. You can have your hand on the plow and be doing something religiously. But yet, have your face turned back to the world. And it turns away from him back to the world, meaning you have no relationship with him. That's religion. You can be doing right things and still not be right with God. And that's what Jesus was talking about. He said, remember Lot's wife. She was right. She exited. She came out with Lot and her daughters. But some men are just got to look back a little bit and just see and reminisce a little bit and she was judged with the whole city and that's why the book of Jude says as an example how God judged Solomon and Gomorrah before her sins don't forget about what happened to Lot's wife judgment didn't just fall on the sinners and the wicked judgment fell on a backslider because Jude goes on and he preaches as he continues in the book of Jude and in verses 12 he said they're twice dead plucked up from the root how can you be twice dead if you hadn't been somewhere along the way twice born it's called born again how can your roots be plucked up if you never had any that means they were one time rooted in Christ. They are one time had a fruit hanging on the limb, but their fruit withers away. They were once saved is what Jude was saying, but now they have walked away and they have been condemned with the wicked in judgment. Jude said in verses 5, he said, if that ain't enough, he said, you once remembered this, but i got to tell it to you again. You, he said, you once believed this way. Jude verse 5, he said, even as I brought the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt, and how many of them fell dead in the wilderness because they turned back from God and didn't believe Him no more. It's example after example of those who started out right but wound up wrong. Like she was preaching. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying. 
I've heard people say, Pastor Ruby, oh, it don't matter how you start as long as you end up right. You can't end up right if you don't start out right. You got to start out right, but it ain't enough. Come on, somebody. God said in his word in 1 Peter chapter 1, in verses 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Say with me, the end of your faith. The salvation of your soul. Now that don't mean if you hadn't believed on Jesus, if you believed on Jesus, don't mean you're not saved now. But what I'm trying to get you to understand, you can't forfeit that faith along the way. You can't walk out of it and go back to the sin and back to the world. Come on somebody yeah. and think you're going to end. Come on somebody and go to heaven. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Hallelujah. My God, what a word is that? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, you can lose it. Because you leave it. You walk away from it. You can still look like you're part of it. And your face be turned back to the world. Come on, somebody. Luke 9, 56, and be lost forever. Twice dead, Jude, verse 12. Jude said it. I'm going to believe Jude. I'm not going to believe these cemetery, I mean seminary scholars, come on, with their denominational theology who think just because one moment in the altar you confess Jesus, then you can just live loose and do anything you want to and call it the grace of God. God's grace ain't greasy. God didn't give you grace to continue in your sin, Romans 6 and 1, but that you might be delivered out of it. Come on, somebody. Now, that don't mean along the way you won't fall and trip. A just man may fall seven times, yet he rises again. Proverbs 24, verses 16. Somebody shout long as you're rising back up. Uh, hallelujah. Not that you fall down and you stay down and you lay down. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. Uh, some have fallen and Pastor Ruby, they've got so comfortable where they fell. They've said, well, Christ fell with me. Friend, I want you to know he came into this world of sin who knew no sin. He took sin in his body. And I'm telling you, he took it in his body so he could take it out of your heart. Uh, so he could take it out of your life. Not that Man. you continue therein. Because uh, John 8 and 12, uh, he said, I'm the light of the world. If any man come after me, he will not walk in darkness, but in the light of life. So remember Lot's wife. Amen. She had already escaped with Lot and his daughters. Genesis 19, 26. But she looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. She was judged with the wicked, and she had already been delivered from them. Because she looked back. My God. My God. Look at your neighbor and say, Don't look back, look up. Don't look back. Look up, lift up your eyes. Come on, somebody, because your redemption is drawing nigh. Hallelujah, Luke 21, verse 28. Somebody say, he's coming. He's coming. Don't play with sin. Don't lay around in the lap of lust. Don't neglect the gift of God that's in you. First Timothy 4, 14, Jesus is returning. He's coming soon. Brian, I don't even know if you remembered, but when I was a boy, I've shared it. I don't even know if y'all remember. When I was a boy, about seven or eight, I was fascinated with any type of movie or Ben Hur or movies or anything. Those old movies, anything to do uh, about the book of Genesis and Abraham and Lot, and especially the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. As a little boy, Brother Paul, I was fascinated with it. If a Sunday school teacher even mentioned anything about it, my little mischief ears would stop. There was something in me planted by Holy Ghost, I know now, that that story, I couldn't get enough of it. If I was in a doctor's office and they had the little, you know, picture book, and if I, if I got on a lot and saw them in the bar, I could not get away from it. Even when I was in sin in the world, I would remember having moments where I'd reflect back. And oh, when I got saved and I found Luke 17, 32, remembers Lot's wife. Hallelujah. And when I first started preaching, guess what I was preaching about? God had sent me to his own, the lost sheep of his own house. Who were sitting in the house like the elder brother of Luke 15. The younger prodigal, we love to preach about him, how he left the father in the house. But there was a lost son who was a prodigal as well. If he was lost, he was the worst of the wasters because that's what prodigal means. Uh, he didn't leave the house. He was still around the father like Brianna was preaching about. Still around Jesus like Judas was but betraying him at the same time. That older brother was still at the father's house with the father 
but he had also likewise forsook the father. He was the worst of the wasters. Because the story, the parable of Luke 15 ends tragically where the father's trying to come outside and entreat his oldest son to come in and come in and be with us and join the party. Your brother who was lost is found. He's dead and now he lives. But the brother wouldn't come in. The story ends with the brother. Man, he would not come in. What a tragic thing. The reason he didn't come in is because he thought he was already in. He thought he was okay. Hallelujah. My Lord, what a word. What a word. Turn the monitors down, Dylan. Holy Ghost. God, thank you for this word we've heard tonight. 